Hey everybody, how's it going? It is Matt and it is Terrifying Tuesday. Yes, 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 folks, it is already Tuesday. Uh, first and foremost, I do hope each and every one of you are having a great morning, evening, dawn, day, or dusk, all that lovely stuff because life is too short as is. Please do like, share, and subscribe. I love seeing each and every one of your faces here every Monday through Friday, both old and new. Uh, and then also do look in the description box for more information on the daily film, such as your brief synopsis, your starring cast, your runtime time of the cut I am watching along with if there's a uh, um, a uh, uh, MPAA rating uh, I'll have your director on there or directors because sometimes like yesterday it was a it was a co-director deal um, and then uh, some trivia if there's anything worthwhile of mentioning on that and then of course there will be either a link for a trailer or a scene in the movie so you get a little bit of um, uh, of everything in there so you can have a little bigger a, a bit of a bigger taste than than what I'm just telling you about the, the the movie and how I feel about it you know sometimes it just takes that little extra to to really uh, uh, pull the trigger on something if if that makes sense now let's get now that we got all that out of the way let's move on to the movie of the day um, now this one came out back in 1990 so 30 years ago if you kids do math and that is none other than beyond darkness and this is directed by Clyde Alexander aka Claudio Fragasso who you should recognize him from troll 2 fame and then uh, amongst all the other um, Bruno Mattei films that he them two both co-directed and worked on together uh, the guy had quite an illustrious uh, illustrious career alongside of Bruno um, who is is uh, uh, definitely a soft spot in my my heart I love both Claudio and Bruno I think their stuff is fun um, Bruno is definitely the better director out of the two um, Claudio I think had a better eye visually but he was not a good director as far as directing his his actors on what to do um, unfold um, t writing stories he was not necessarily um, at least this one and Troll to really show that um, he's unable to really um, direct American actors, if that makes sense. But either way, it still came out and it, and it uh, is a fun little movie. And by the way, this is the Scream Factory double feature. Is if you can't tell of both Metamorphosis and Beyond Darkness. Metamorphosis is directed by George Eastman, who which also stars um, uh, Gene LeBrock, who is also one of our main stars here in Beyond Darkness. So there is at least that going on. And they both were made in 1990. Um, uh, uh, and it also another weird fact is it has um, Michael Stevenson in it. Um, not this one, but Beyond Darkness has Michael Stevenson in it, who went on to uh, later to do Troll Two with Claudio Fragasso. So um, he plays a kid named Martin in here. He is a very annoying kid. Um, both the kids are super duper annoying. Uh, and then we also got David Brandon in here. He plays um, a uh, uh, like a gruff. Uh, priest who has basically lost his way he's becoming an alcoholic um he's kind of shunned upon in the the community um he he definitely is has fallen from grace another one of the in other words but um uh uh he is also i recognized him most from uh, uh stage fright the uh the uh mich the uh, Michel Suave or uh, Suave, Suave or however it's it's pronounced, um, the Michel Suave movie, uh, Stage Fright, which is a very very good little giallo. Uh, I would call it a giallo slasher esque type movie. It's uh, uh, very very fun. I definitely recommend that one. Um, and then we like I said we got Jean LeBrock in here, and then we got Barbara Bingham who like which I recognize her from uh, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, what is that number eight? Uh, of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, she plays the um, uh, the the main girl's mother or or stepmother or guardian. I can't remember exactly what, but she is. Um, uh, uh, one of the main characters in that as well. Uh, uh, this is definitely, uh, uh, I would say, a low point of her career. Um, I didn't look at a whole bunch of other things that she did, but I do recognize her from both this and that. And then we got Teresa F. Walker in here, and then we got Stephen Brown playing um, uh, this uh, uh, really old priest type. Uh, oh, priest, he is a priest, not a priest type, but... Um, 
very old man that uh, is, I'm guessing, the Monsignor of the uh, the church that they are at. I'm not really 100% um, uh, uh, um, knowledgeable on the Catholic religion. Uh, I did not grow up with Catholicism, um, that it, so I don't really understand every single thing about it, um, which is perfectly okay. That's every religion. There's I don't understand everything about it, and any one of them. There they all have things that are are weird, but that's not why we're here. Let's get off of that subject really fast. Put that baby to bed. But it has to do with Catholicism and and um, a, a priest who is um, new to this area, and he is is uh him and his family have moved into this house that the the church has given them and it is a very large elegant house um uh down in or it's um the same house that they filmed uh the beyond in and killing birds zombie five uh or aka raptors <laughs> uh but anyways it that's that was a little funny trivia a little tidbit that i saw on this and then linda blair was originally uh was approached to be in this but obviously she declined i can see why um it's Claudio Fragasso, for Christ's sakes. Uh, uh, nobody wants to work with him, at least no no normal person does. I would work with him, but I'm no actor, and I, I guarantee my, my acting would be just terrible, even though it'd be fun. Anyways, but... Like I said, um, they move into this new new house that the church gave them. This house happens to be haunted. And um, as a matter of fact, a funny side note is um, this movie also ran under the title of La Casa 5, which is The House 5, which is um, a sequels to the uh, the house trilogy, the, you know, the the one with... Um, Oh shoot, I forget his name. It's got Norm in it and uh um oh by God. Anyways, um but either way, it's it's runs as a sequel off of that, which um they did four sequels American style on that. Uh Italy did three, which um is Ghost House, Witchery, and Beyond Darkness is number five, which also Beyond Darkness runs under the title in Italy as Evil Dead. Five. Yes, yes, folks, I did say that correct. Evil Dead 5 and House 5. Yeah. <laughs> Evil Dead 5 and House 5. Like, that's just a weird, fun little thing that the Italians do or did. Um, they used to make these fake sequels, and or they would make these movies, and then they would slap fake sequels on on titles on them just to uh, uh, sell them and get people, people's get people's butts in the seats and you know what a lot of times it worked um it definitely was one that i i it, it uh, caught my attention mostly because of the director but um like i said uh they move into this haunted house uh uh this gruff old priest is coming to help them because um at one point their very first night there they're having um uh all kinds of weird occurrences happening, such as uh, uh, the uh, um, the radio they have, the old transistor radio they have, keeps turning on and off, and it keeps ha blaring out these satanic um, uh, uh, chants. Um, so they, you know, oh, that's weird, you know, and they go over, the dad goes over, Gene LeBrock goes over and unplugs it. Um, it decides it's going to start doing it again, and they're just... Hmm, that's weird. Hmm. You know, there's a lot of weird shit happening in front of these people like that. Uh, um, they're seeing visions of people. Uh, um, this black swan, uh, uh, rocking chair type thing rocks on its own. Uh, uh, the kids see and feel things. Uh, there's a weird hole in, in, in one of the, in the walls of, of the, uh, one of the kids closet rooms. Like it's a, it's a hold, hold off, um, like it, the room's been blocked off and there's just this little tiny hole in it, this little like egg shaped hole. And at one point the little girl describes it as, Oh, it's, it's like the, uh, a hair dryer. It's because it's, because it makes a sound and it dries your hair, which I never really understood what the, 
what the fuck she was trying to go with at that. Um, much like my reviews, uh, um, they get, get a little um, uh, uh, jumbled up and don't make sense. This really made no sense. Like, like the brother looks at her just like, oh, oh okay, you know, like... It's just full of silly little things like that, you know. Like at one point, the uh, um, the uh, uh, David Brandon's character, he is is at the very, very, very beginning. He is at this uh, electrocution, which with this ex execution, which is this lady right here, which was ahead of a a coven of witches that were burned at the stake at uh, on that property. However many years ago, blah, 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 blah. But this lady was, was killing children and consuming their souls and this and that. And so she's being laid to rest, uh, being put to put to sleep on the, uh, the old electric chair. So that, that's how you get um, the weird uh, uh, hauntings going on within the house is, is due to, to the witchcraft from before. Now, um... So, like I said, uh, he's faced the, you got this, this, um, uh, David Brandon character where I was going to go on with that was he is, um, faced with these visions of this, this, uh, witch here on the cover that he is, um, uh, uh, he tried saving before she, uh, uh, was executed. Um, so she, at one point when they have, when she takes, um, the son, uh, 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 Michael Stevenson, uh, Martin's character, uh, Martin is his name, uh, takes him hostage basically within the walls of the house. Um, at one point, one of the visions is to him, he's, the kid is sitting in this electric chair and if he pulls the switch and, and fries the kid, uh, he'll get to know all the knowledge that no human will have as, has ever known before which is complete horseshit because she was a human beforehand. Uh, so she would know this knowledge uh, uh, before so because she was a witch. Um, I never really quite understood le things like that in this movie. There's little tiny little things like that. Um, arriving in places while it's daylight and then within no time it's dark time. Uh, uh, I don't get it. It is, it is a, uh, miserable, no, it's not miserable. Yesterday's movie was kind of miserable. This movie is bad. Yes, 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 it is bad, but it is absolutely entertaining from beginning to end, I thought. Um, definitely, um, not, uh, a, a, a strong effort on Claudio's, uh, um, on Claudio's end as far as being a director. Uh, Troll 2 is definitely um, his magnum opus compared to this. Uh, that one is, is a much, much, much uh, far superior film compared to uh, Beyond Darkness. So keep that in mind, folks. So if you don't like Troll 2, you will not like Beyond Darkness. Now, as far as any kind of ratings go, um, on a technical side, this thing's probably like a 2 out of 5. Um, it, uh, like I said, there's jumbled up parts in the story that make no freaking sense. Um, the acting is, it's okay. Um, David Brandon and Gene LeBrock are definitely the two um, that steal the show. They're the best two actors in, in, in the entire film, which I'll, I'll give them that. Especially um, uh, uh, David Brandon's character. I thought he was really good in it, playing the, the drunk, uh, um, uh, disavowed priest. You know, I thought he was, I thought he was pretty good in it. Um, and as far as any kind of camera shots go, there were some, there was some fun stuff. Uh, um, that's where I can, I say Claudio Fragasso had an eye for film. He could, I think he's one of those guys that if you were to give him a camera and frame it up, tell him to frame it up and film it, um, just follow the, the, uh, exact plans of what we want. I think he would have been a, a, uh, would be a decent director, but, um, that is not what he is. He is one of those that does, he's kind of inept when it comes to American lifestyle, or at least he was. I mean, come for Christ's sakes, the guy worked, was, was a co-director of Hell of the Living Dead, if that tells you anything. <laughs> 
anyways, but um, like I said, a two out of five for a technical side. As far as any kind of like uh, entertaining side goes, this thing's like a two out of five. This is like a four out of four out of ten, five out of ten kind of movie. It's just middle of the road, just under the middle of the road. Excuse me. Um, kind of little uh, uh, possession flick because it's about exorcisms and and hauntings and witchcraft and 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 the and the house being built on on a, uh, a gateway to hell because at one point they even bring that up and it's just it's just a jumbled mess it's it wants to be something bigger than what it really is um they, they could have cut some stuff out of there and gone with certain things a little further with certain other certain things like uh um the very very end the Stephen Brown character he doesn't really have a whole lot in here but there is a, a final showdown um, that involves the mother, the father, and, and Stephen Brown's character, the, 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 uh, Monsignor, um, he, um, he basically is, uh, uh, having this final showdown with, with, uh, uh, our, our witch here, our demon, as he kept, as he refers to her as, um, it's kind of silly because he's doing it from the church and damn you demon. I will not let you kill this child da, 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 and things like that. And it's like, how is he able to do an exorcism from across town? You know, I don't get how that worked. You know, like, like, can, can I have somebody exercised like four States over? Because there, there's definitely some people that need it out there. I mean, I'm just saying like, how the, how, how does that work? I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. I've said enough about uh, Beyond Darkness. I'll eventually uh, watch and review Metamorphosis. I've actually seen it before, but I want to revisit it before I ever review that one because it's been a it's been a few years. Anyways, all right. Love your faces as always, and I'll see you tomorrow with another great movie. I'm not 100% what I'll be throwing out here, but uh, we'll find out soon enough.